Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have a great show for you today. I spent more time with Brandy and Julie, some more hilarious topics with them, and then I do a great interview with one of the stars of Netflix buying Beverly Hills. It's Michelle Schwartz, who had a very heated moment with Mauricio's daughters. We get all into that, how she got on the show, her life in real estate, now a TV star, and how production really works. Very juicy. But let me just remind you guys that all of my dates are on sale right now at heathermcdonald.net. I'm going to be next, May 3rd, in Phoenix. I've got Denver. I've got the Pechanga in Temecula. I've got San Diego, Saratoga, East Coast, Chicago, Texas. All of it is there at heathermcdonald.net. Go get those tickets right now. First, let me just get a little more fun hot topic time with my girls, Brandy and Julie, hosts of the podcast, Dumb Gay Podcast. Welcome, dynamic duo. <laughs> We're back. We're back. We've never even left. <laughs> no. We've been staying here the whole time. <laughs> um, okay, I want to talk about there's supposedly another episode of Quiet on Set coming out. I don't know when it is and what we're going to see. But oh. this guy, Steve Burns, Blue's Clues. Now, yes. this means a lot to me because I watched a lot of this when my kids were little. Blue's Clues. Blue's <laughs> Clues. And it was this guy and... We're, my kids are very into it, especially, I think, McKinsey and Drake. We would watch it. And um, anyway, then one day, they're like, he's retiring. He's leaving. And the whole thing was, hey, guys, I'm going to college. Well, he looked like he was about 35 at the time. <laughs> but he now, I but he still looks the same. He looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he, why he left, what he ever did. I don't know what happened to him. But he has come forward. And, you know, of course, he's weighing in saying, well, nothing happened to him because he was a full-blown adult. He feels terrible about everything. he everyday. didn't do anything, did he? He didn't do anything. Okay. He's just like, I just want to check in, make sure everybody's okay. He did like a post or something about it. And um, anyway, then they replaced him with this younger, cuter, brunette, Blue's Clues guy. Yeah. And I was like, how many other moms were suddenly like, all right, hi, <laughs> hi, Blue's Clues. But- Anyway, I did see this thing, and I thought this was a great idea. This is why I kind of put this, because you're like, why are you talking about this stupid topic? Anyway, I watched this thing where this, a TikTok where this baby was sitting and watching a TV, and it was this older woman reading a book. And she goes, my mom wanted to be part of caring for our child. So my mom started her own YouTube page that they could put on the TV of her reading stories and doing things. And I thought that was so genius because instead of them going crazy f to see some character, why, like how great that then when they see their grandma come visit, they're like, this is the rock star Celebrity. that I see every day on my there's TV. Nana that is a great TV. idea. <laughs> yeah, there's Nana from TV and it's so easy to do. Oh my God, that's such a good idea. It's they such a good they idea. They love seeing screens. It doesn't matter yeah. who's on it more than, And she's know, reading books screens. and stuff and, Talking and yeah. teaching, but it's the grandma versus some other person that you think is maybe doing <laughs> sadistic <laughs> exactly. messages or wearing yeah. Balenciaga. I don't know. Yeah. So this is one way you could like do it. I thought that was it's a That's great, idea. great idea. It really is. This episode of Juicy Scoop is brought to you by Booking.com, Booking.Yeah. Booking.com offers possibilities across the U.S. for all the travelers you want to be. From trendy boutique hotels to spacious apartments with so many choices across the U.S., you can book whoever you want to be. So whether you're going with your family, your kids, a girls weekend, maybe you want to book a five-star hotel to just indulge your luxury side, or maybe you're looking to book a remote cabin in the woods to explore your adventurous side, there are so many possibilities. Book whoever you want to be on Booking.com, Booking.Yeah. Now, Ariana Grande, now these are from, this from the blast. These are, you know, people think this is just rumors that the reason they're not talking, the reason that they, you know, is that did they get any hush money from their experience? Now, when we see Ariana Grande, she they had her doing very sexual things with a potato. 
Yes. Can I squeeze a potato? Yeah. Yep. And um, but they all, you know, but also they could have just told her to do that, and she just did it. The same thing with Ray Romano. He was eating a pickle like a dick, uh, and in a clip because they told him to do it because he loves was... dick. <laughs> what? Because he loves dick. <laughs> Ray, who knows? Come on. Well, that whole that guy Chris Schneider wanted everybody to do sexual things. Yeah, he wanted yeah, the so kids just, to do it. He wanted everyone to do it. But also, piece the of kids shit. may have not even known that. But anyway, she is. Neither of them are talking, and I can see why. Elizabeth Gillis has been married to her guy for a while, and he's twenty years old. That she was Victoria, victorious or whatever. Her guy is twenty years um, older. His name is Michael Corcoran, and they met on set. And when they met on set, she was only 16. Mm. Okay. And then they started dating conveniently when she was 19. You know, whenever you, you meet and someone's under 18, you know, you just go, oh, well, wait, you know, of course. I have a terrible and, take on, on this, though. But they're yeah. mar- they're still married. So okay. I'm just saying, yeah. My take is, and this is not going to be agreed with, which uh-huh. is fine. Um, if you do take the hush money. Yeah. Um, I think at that point, there's now an awareness of whether what happened to other people or what happened to you. Maybe you didn't know whether it be Michael Jackson. A lot of these people with Michael Jackson, let's say, they were paid and they were paid a lot of money. And then when the money ran out, and this is kind of the thing that we think Corey Feldman may dance around with. We're not sure because he's always saying he's going to come forward, but he never does. I feel like if you take the money and you're taking money to be silent, that you should then stay silent. Uh, because you t- you made a contract and you accepted money to do that and you should honor the contract. That's the way I feel about it. If you didn't take any hush money and now it's up to you to do what you will and people can wait as long as they want to ever come forward. It's a scary thing. But if you were paid, then you should honor the contract you were paid for because you knew what you were doing when you took that money. It's because the money's well, gone I'm sh- now. I'm sure whatever hush money there was, there's probably something that's like, I'm not admitting to doing this to you, but for the sake of lengthy trials and for us all to move on, my attorney, Michael Cohen, no, just kidding, would like to give you, would like Michael to give, Avenatti. Yeah, yeah, or either or, would like to give you, you know, $130,000. So, but we're not admitting it. We're just saying we don't want this in the press. We want you to thrive. So there's probably something like that. Yeah. And then time goes on and then with certain um, survivors, they might be like, you know what? I don't care. And I do want to share because maybe this person is still out there. You know, in the case of Michael Jackson, of course, he's dead, but they are feeling like we, with the two people from the Neverland thing, I don't know if they ever got, I can't remember. There were so many in different trials and everything. But one thing with Corey Feldman is once he weirdly became Michael Jackson with his music, when Mike, when Michael Jackson was already kind of out of style, that's what I remember. I'm like, why is he doing Michael Jackson from like 1983 in like 1991? Like I was like, why is he suddenly the dancing and everything? And he always said nothing ever happened. He was a total delight. But there was one story that I recall. So I'm not saying this is 100 percent. I remember reading some type of story that he said when he was hanging out with Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson said, oh, you should look at this anatomy book. And he opened this like science book or something, and it did have male genitalia. And that made him uncomfortable, and he like left. But he said, that's all that's ever happened. He never touched him, blah, blah, blah. So he implies who knows? It, He implies it's with other actors. Corey Feldman. With, and he also, Corey says, there's all these other people. Yeah. You know, business people, you know, executives and everything right. that's been happening for years. And when he came on my show years ago... It was a difficult, really difficult interview, and he was he was basically like, no kid should ever be on set, mm. ever. And I was like, well, then how do you tell stories? Yeah. Like, there's some stories where you need a kid. Like, yeah. are we never going to ever have children, like, in shows or anything? Or, you know, um, certainly there's, you know, and I definitely think things have gotten safer, and this story definitely helped it. But so, yeah, who knows? Um, Todd Chrisley. Chrisley knows Ugh. best, doing 11 years and his wife's doing nine or something. He must pay out 755 for a defamation lawsuit. Against who? Against, I'll read it to you. It's back in July of 2021. This, uh, he, um, claiming he falsely <laughs> accused this woman. So this woman researched his case. 
Okay, found out all the things he was doing, which he's now in prison for. So claiming that he um, falsely accused her, she's saying he accused her of illegally snooping on a government program to pull info on his family. It was also claimed he began a social media campaign against the GDOR, I guess that's what she worked for, and, and certain of his employees contending that the investigation was illegal and proper, improperly motivated. So according to the court docs, a Georgia judge has ordered that Todd Chrisley cough up 7, 755 mm. in compensatory and punitive damages and legal fees to Amy Doherty Hines after concluding that Reality Star, that he had launched a vicious social media crusade against her, saying she was a liar and she wasn't, and it was her job to do this. And therefore, will she ever see the money? It's going to be a long thing, but wow, interesting, right? Yeah, very interesting. Was she? Did she work somewhere, or do you think she was like an internet sleuth? No, I think she worked. Maybe I'm not exactly sure. That I have to go a little bit deeper. This just popped up, but um, you got to be careful. But with she the... shared the information, and it was all accurate. But then he was like, "This person's an awful person. She, she's a liar. She's you know all this other stuff." And so then she was like, "Screw that!" Yeah. And she went, and it was proven that she wasn't a liar. It Can't go around that, slandering that... <laughs> someone's reputation yeah. and saying they're a liar when they didn't lie. When and she you're the a... one with the bad reputation, right. Todd. And you're yes. the liar, uh, Todd. Okay, this is a crazy story. This girl is named Elisa Jordana. A lot of people sent it to me because she was on Juicy Scoop. And it was kind of an odd interview. She came on the show because she was recently in the news a few years ago for being engaged to Andy Dick. Oh. oh. And she wrote for Howard Stern and she was in this like girl band and she had this whole kind of crazy life story and she's pretty. And then I was like, how the hell were you ever engaged to Andy Dick? Like, and isn't he gay or bi or whatever? <sighs> and isn't he like a drug addict? Did he pass? Can you just see if Andy Dick's alive? I think he's alive. Anyway, he said he's been in and out of every yeah. bad situation. And Basically, she it was kind of crazy in the story where basically he was did not want anything to do with her. And she was like, but we're engaged. And I'm trying to say. And I was like, were you really in love with him? Like, you really wanted to marry this guy. It was very, very odd. So that was the show. And it was odd. Then I go out to a restaurant and I see her. And she's like at that Wally's Cheese Bar situation. In Beverly Hills. Yes. No, I think we were in the one in Santa Monica. But anyways, with my girlfriend. And she's like, Heather, hi. And she's very attractive. And she's, you know, looking for a guy. We're talking. She has this, like, internet YouTube show, Kermit and Friends. And she does a lot of streaming. Now, what I've noticed, there's a lot of people that will stream all the time because I think they get money if you stream, like on TikTok or whatever, if you're streaming all the time. She was streaming. And she's in a car with her boyfriend who didn't look like anything, no look or whatever, like she's whatever. But I just thought it was weird. He didn't look like they matched, okay? And somehow this girl calls and she thinks that the girl is cheating with her boyfriend, whatever. And he's trying to defend himself. And they're streaming while they're driving. So they're live streaming. They're live streaming. And she smacks him. And then at one point, he grabs her hair or whatever. But she was, in fact, arrested because then he called the police and they had the evidence from the stream that she did, in fact, smack him, which is assault. He called the police while yeah, driving. Or the, or the girl that was the cheater girl did. It's so weird. Mm. I was like, when this first came up, I, I thought, is this, again, like some weird publicity stunt? Yeah. Like, and they're kind of all in on it. It seems so weird. Like, I, I confronted, because there's like a lot of fake stuff on the yeah. internet where you're like, oh my God, this person confronted this person for cheating and the acting so bad. And you're like, this isn't true, but it still got a million Right, um, And then you go down like four thing comments and someone's like, this is horrible acting. And then you're like, oh, yeah, this is fake. But it still gets all those views to start. Right. So I was like, but no, she actually was really arrested and now said it was like the worst day of her life. I mean, the lead actually to correct you, Heather. Uh, strangely, she said it was the second worst day of her life. And I was curious, what was the first going on Juicy Scoop? I mean, <laughs> What could have been worse than this? <laughs> like being engaged yeah. to, or or probably it was worse is when Andy Dick blew you off. Like Andy Dick was like, you're too crazy yeah. for me. Yeah. So when, when you're too crazy for Andy Dick, Dick. potato. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> potato. 
Did you see about Ricky Martin's yes. visible boner? So Julie has. I've best, watched it fifty this times. Is her okay, man, well then, why don't you? This why is her man crush. Cover this story. I don't know why he was there at the Madonna. He's at the Madonna show. She's doing like an homage to Vogue and all that stuff. So they're sitting on two chairs, him and Madonna, and they're 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 critiquing all the like they're in a ballroom. Yeah, they have these cards. Yeah, and always a celebrity does this every show. Okay, so like they're in a ballroom, like from the you know like the old days where it'd be like tens across the board, right? So he's watching, and you're like he's sitting there, and he. And these two guys, or three guys, and it might more, be almost four. It's like a group of men. But the main like, two men. Dancers. Dancers come up, gorgeous, whatever. Rubbing on him. Were rubbing on one down in his lap, the other one behind that guy. Yes, doing it, it in, the, in the B. It was very yeah. sexual. Very, Extremely. Very, very sexual. So he's loving it and just enjoying it. And then you just see the tent appear in the pants. And at one point he gets up and it's just like... He's got a, a he starts, whatever, he's got a he boner. starts kind of flinging the tent around. Yes, he's, he's like, trying to wiggle it off. I think, but he was shake it off, shake it off. He's trying to shake it off. Oh my god! It was it was pretty, you know, because some people are like, oh, it was just like his pants, and the pants are loose, and blah blah blah. But I mean, I'm no expert, but. It looked like a, bo- a bone. It looked <laughs> well, like a bone. I have not gone to this Madonna concert. I've gone to many others, uh, seeing a lot of clips from it. I heard it's great. If someone wants to give me a free ticket, fine. But I really didn't have the great. It, it, but then last night we were at dinner with a couple and they said that they went and I did not realize this. And this is what will make me not want to go oh. to protect her voice. She keeps the arenas very hot. No, she doesn't turn no. on the air. Nope. 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 It's just one big room of B.O. I'm, like, yeah, I'm OK. Absolutely okay not. with Oh. Starting at ten thirty, even though it's supposed to be eight thirty, but if you're not going to turn on the air, so and then of course people are annoyed that she comes on at ten thirty. Well, now you know she comes on at ten thirty, but since the ticket was for eight thirty, there was a class action suit against her, and she and her attorneys are saying we'd like this thrown out because there's no real damages besides like being tired the next day for work that constitutes money that I kept you. You know, they, so you, instead of going to, you know, getting in your car and everything, going to bed at 12, 15, you went to bed at 3 a.m. And then you had to wake up the next day to drive your kid to school. So, like, fortunately, nobody got in a car accident. Like, I mean, the, trying to say the trauma, the same lawsuit that you guys are trying to do against me for making you watch Seeking Sister Rides <laughs> and the other orgasm documentary. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, it's going to be hard to prove, you guys. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, but even I mean, for Mark Garrett, shows, shows, I think I think when we... in a, when a court of law <laughs> and a jury sees seeking sister wife and the vagina show, <laughs> I understand. think we have a pretty strong case. <laughs> and then it, and the text of me being like, "Hey, do you guys mind watching this?" <laughs> Evident jury, please. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm I'm very disturbed by the air conditioning. That's situation. horrific. That is horrific. Now this is kind of interesting. This woman went out on Facebook and was like, hey, my husband loves attention and please (laughs) somebody help find him because he up and left when I was pregnant with our second child and I don't know where he is and I'd like to serve him with divorce papers. So could somebody please find him so I can divorce his ass? The internet went crazy. It blew up. They found him within 24 hours. They found his Bumble profile, all of this stuff. He was somewhere like in Texas. You know where he was? He was with Annette, Annette Benning in Apples Don't Far From the Tree yeah. in oh, a cabin out of the mountain in cabin. Georgia with Lynette slash Savannah <laughs> hiding out, hoping that his wife would rem- would remember how much he, she should appreciate him. Yeah, that that's this does sound mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. so. But he was I love that worst show ever on Peacock. <laughs> I did a special Patreon it on it. They, I made them watch it. I didn't really make you guys watch it. You said we were you wanted inspired to, we're to watch it. it. That we cannot... are going to put it in the lawsuit. <laughs> That's going to be another addendum. Okay. Um, anyway, I just thought it's amazing that women can find a fucked dude. Like if a guy is a cheating. Like trying to date other women, multiple women. But like, what is crazy is there's so many grifter women out there that I'm sure 
screw guys and act like they love them and take their money and whatever. But a bunch of guys will never bother to find them. like it's so I think it's just like with men, with girls that do it to guys, they kind of expect it might happen. Like, oh, you're with a beautiful girl. She was younger than you. She blew you off and took your money. And then the guy's too embarrassed to say she really didn't like my dick that much. She just liked my wallet. But when it happens to a woman, women always believe that the guy loves them because they're fabulous. They're like, finally, somebody gets me. They fall for it, the dirty johns and everything. And then they find out he's dating all these people or he left. And women are like, I got you, girl. And if women could support women in all aspects of life, not just when they're screwed over by a uh, romantic dude, but in all aspects of life, Mm -hmm. we Mm -hmm. could be so much further along. Women are 52 percent of the population not 49 oh not 50 but larger population just think about that for a second i didn't know that yeah it made me oh. think maybe um chris lee todd chris lee's uh <laughs> lady found this guy so yeah. she can do the slew thing <laughs> and this looks mis- yeah. maybe she wants to get the divorce because she wants to marry someone else and perhaps it's that guy morgan wayland oh, from the chair literally yeah. looks like the same woman meanwhile they're <laughs> like woman finds husband working at a gastro pub <laughs> This I thought was really funny. There's a, a spirit. You've heard of Spearmint Rhino. It's a strip club. Yes. Well, they're suing Peppermint <laughs> Hippo for trademark. And I thought that that is kind of funny because normally it's not the same name, but it is a minty flavor. Spearmint or Peppermint. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rhino or Hippo. Mm-hmm. They're both strip clubs. So they're suing for it. And, you know, of course, Juicy Scoop is trademarked. So I'm like, what could that be? Because we always think if there's a juicy or they're scooping it, there might be a trademark violation. But someone now, if they win, someone could call themselves the moist poop. Right. Mm, they the, could. The, mo- the moist poop. They could. Uh, podcast. And I may, they may or may not have a problem with it. I don't know. Because juicy and moist. Yeah. They could do. It could be poop anything. and scoop. You yes. scoop a poop. Yeah, you, you do. And, could, and then people let, can say, "Hey, I'm a moisty, I'm a moisty pooper." <laughs> yeah, love yes. you, moisty pooper, Mo- moisty poop on tour. And then they're like, "I thought Juicy Scoop was on tour. That's I meant different. to go to Juicy Scoop, but I accidentally That's ended up at the poop. moisty, at the yeah. moisty poop, moisty yeah. poop, uh, moisty poop stand up experience." <laughs> people should be careful. I think I have a Jewish cousin named Moisty Poop. <laughs> Moisty poop, poop bird. Moisty, moisty, moisty. I have to just say, I am so sick of these clickbait things, and I will bring it up all the time, Tamara and Vicky of OC. (laughs) How? And Cam. Who? And Cam. And Cam Zosiak does it too. How? Why do you guys keep doing this? You're on TV shows. You're uh, on a successful comedy tour. <laughs> the moisty poop comedy tour. You don't tour. need to do this. So the, she did this photo. Like, I need your prayers. The clickbait. So I'm like, I got to see what this clickbait is. So we went through. It's just old uh, body cam video of when she and Corey got in a fight and the police came. Ugh. But the photo is her with an oxygen um, in her and, and like her heart and everything. So I need your prayer. So you would think you're either getting some testing done, you had a heart yeah. attack, whatever. They'll just throw any photo up about anybody themselves or other people. And yeah, that was like back from when just, she had her stroke uh, how seven much are years they ago. Get, I want someone to know how much are you getting for this, Tamara, Vicky, and Kim? How much are you getting for these clip bait things? Is it every t- every article? It's a thousand dollars. You know, and you, you just give them access to your Facebook and you post it? Or is it like 150? Maybe it's so much. They're like, I don't care that Heather keeps bringing it up. And I don't care that I cause my followers to waste six minutes they'll never get back clicking through this shit. <laughs> when you <laughs> For went to no the, info and no real story. When you went to the link in the bio, was it an external link? Like, Yeah, you have to go a couple times. Oh, so then you're, it's clicks on that That's website. what I'm saying, it's clicks, yeah. But so if you get, you know, if they're getting 10,000... I'm happy to pretend I'm in the hospital. Oh, so now you're going to do it? Yeah. Everybody. For my 14 followers. Yes. Um, (laughs) Well, thank you so much, you guys. Um, You can find out what their ailments are (laughs) um, Mm -hmm. at julianbrandy.com. julianbrandy.com is the website. It's the website for their funny Patreon, for their great podcast, Dumb Gay Podcast, to come see us. Of course, in uh, the the next shows to come see us are in Phoenix and Denver in May, heathermcdonald.net. But now for my juicy interview. 
you guys know I do my own hair and sometimes it's relaxing. Sometimes it just takes too much time and I don't really love the final result. Well, let me tell you what I'm loving right now. It's Way's new anti-frizz cream because who wants to be frizzy? Grab Way's new anti-frizz cream because it's a lightweight cream that provides immediate frizz control that lasts up to 72 hours. I also love that it protects my hair against heat because I blow it. I use a curling iron. Sometimes I've used a straightener and it really can get dry. And this really helps reduce and repair split ends, which I also suffer from because it comes with this intense hydration, which we all need. I also love their leave-in conditioner. I use their detox shampoo once a week that really helps get rid and clean the product buildup. Also hard water deposits, all of it. Frizz free up your schedule with Way. Go to the way, T-H-E-O-U-A-I dot com and enter the promo code JUICY for 15% off any product. That's the way dot com, promo code JUICY. This episode of Juicy Scoop is brought to you by Booking.com, Booking.Yeah. Booking.com offers possibilities across the U.S. for all the travelers you want to be. From trendy boutique hotels to spacious apartments with so many choices across the U.S., you can book whoever you want to be. And by that, I mean, when it's me, do I want to be the traveling comedian? Maybe I'm bringing my son. Maybe I'm bringing an opener. I do it when I was booking hotels on the college search for my son. That was super easy. That was special. I am looking forward to doing a girls weekend soon and be with my college sorority sisters. Also, Peter and I have a wedding in September. I want something fabulous. So maybe you want to, I know I do, want to book a five-star hotel to indulge your luxury side. Or maybe you're looking to book a remote cabin in the woods to explore your adventurous side. There are so many possibilities. Book whoever you want to be on Booking.com, Booking.Yeah. That's Booking.com, Booking.Yeah. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, you know I've been talking about buying Beverly Hills on Netflix, the second season. That's Mauricio's big agency, drama-filled second season of this show. And I have one of the stars, Michelle Schwartz, who had a lot of drama this season. Welcome to Juicy Scoop for the first time. Thank you for having me. You are featured as the realtor and you are managing one of the agencies out in the Valley. Is that correct? Is your position? I'm actually the first female managing partner in the whole company. And I run three offices in Studio City, Sherman Oaks, and Calabasas with about 160 agents. Well, there you go. Yes. And you have those moments where you're like, "Mm, yeah, I've done it. Okay. And you just fall off a turnip truck. And I love that. First, let me ask you, being that you were one of the first founding people, so let's get back to, let's just get a little background on you, like what made you come to real estate? Did you go to college before? Like, what is your history? What's where? Did, how did you get here? So thank you. I, uh, I went to USC for college. So did I. I know. <laughs> um, and uh, when I graduated, I said I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I said, and my dad says, well, what are you going to do in life? And I said, oh, I'm going to be an actress, daddy. And he's like, well, no, no, you're not. You have to get a job. So he says, you like to talk on the phone a lot. And I said, yes, I do. And he says, OK, you should go into PR or into real estate. And so um, Mauricio has been a longtime friend of the family. How did you meet? How did he become a longtime friend? What so was the connection? My dad's from Mexico City. Oh. So Mexican Jews, Mexican Jews. My dad and uh, Eduardo are still very, very close. That's Mauricio's dad? That's Mauricio's oh, okay. dad. Uh-huh. So we all grew up together, you know, going on ski trips and what have you. So I've known him my, most of my life. So did you know him before he married Kyle? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, how funny! And now, but he did. Did he go to college, Mauricio? Uh, I mean, according to his book, he did not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, wasn't he like either selling suits or a personal trainer or something before? He was selling Kyle suits. He... Schmatas. Oh, okay. He was selling schmatas. No, yes, he was selling suits. Um, uh-huh. And uh, I mean, he's told me this story, and I read it in this book, and um, that you know on. Christmas Eve, I think one year he lost his job and they were down in the dumps. And it sounds like, you know, he had such a great partner that they were able to kind of figure it out and build it up together. And that's how he got his Kyle. Real- yes, with yeah. Kyle, of course. Um, and that's how he ended up getting his real estate license. So it's. So you knew him when then he got the real estate license. 
And of course, Kathy Hilton's husband, Rick Hilton, um, Kyle's brother-in-law, he had the Hilton and Highland. Was that his first agency that he went to? So he was working there first? To be Rick? honest, I don't know. Okay. I would assume so based yeah. on what I've read. Um, but I don't know. I mean, he and I are about 10 years apart. So there's obviously like a natural Age gap. Difference. Yeah, there's uh-huh. a natural gap in when you're growing up to the interest right. level that I had in his life was probably little to none until I got to a certain uh, age where I started becoming aware of the people that were around me. But when I graduated, I called Mo and I said, you know, tell me about real estate. And this and is- at that time, agency had not been developed no. yet. He was still, okay. Yeah, right. and this is still probably, he was significant on his career, but he certainly wasn't like the mega realtor that he is. And this is before Kyle was on Real Housewives? Yes, way okay. before. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Um, so I kind of picked his brain about real estate and I picked someone's brain about um, PR and I ended up going in the PR angle. Oh, you did? I did. Um, So I worked for a company for a very short period of time and then I started my own PR firm. So I had my own PR company for about eight years. And then when I was pregnant, I was buying a house and I realized that there was an opportunity that I could maybe do better than what my realtor did. Uh Um, And I started recognizing the similarities in the marketing tactics that could be used from what I was doing for products and companies and how to uh, how to apply it basically into real estate. So my transition was when I got pregnant with my first son, I called Mo and I said, guess what? I'm pregnant. And he's like, Mazel Tov. I'm like, that's not why I'm calling. I'm calling because I'm going to transition into real estate. He said, great, have your baby, get your license. Let's go. Call me when you're ready. And so that's what I did. And he was working at Hilton and Highland at the time. And I remember going into his office and he's like, OK, what is what is it that you want? And you see this on the show. I mean, we have a, a little convo about it. And I just said, you know, I don't want to be an assistant. I don't want to. Uh, work for someone else. I want to just observe and be the next you, essentially, is what it was. And that was before Real Housewives, before any of that. So, so then said, you joined the Hilton and Highland, too. I did, with him. Yeah, oh, okay. So then cut to the moment where, you know, he tells it on the, on the show. We never really knew why he left, but it made sense. Yeah. And when I had Kyle on the show, you know, I grew up in real estate. I was a realtor. And I was like, so Kyle, there's got to be some women now that you're on the hottest show that um, that are like, OK, I really want to be friends with Kyle. So let's list our house with Mauricio. I'm like, does he ever kind of know that and bring you to dinner or to a listing appointment? And she's like, totally. Oh, that's so interesting. She's like, yeah, of course. Like, you know, she played the game well yeah. as far as, you know, being Helping a supportive promote. wife. Yeah. Why not? And so, well, it all goes into the same pot, right? right. So yes. it's all good. Yeah. And then it made sense that um, it made sense that you know, with the great, you know, press of the TV show and all those eyes on you, that he decided to do his own thing. He explains it really well in the show. He says, you know, he had this incredible year, and he was like, I would like to be a partner in the firm, and they were like, no. Now, I do want to say, I think there's something really interesting about that because a lot of people have talked about it, and. My now real estate changes and we never had teams and stuff like that. But like when my parents did really well, they would always, you know, always people would be coming at them wanting to take them out to dinner. Da da da. da. We'll give you, you know, to the point where they're like hundred dollars a month is all you have to pay and you keep a hundred percent of commission. You mean poaching. Because we just yeah, poaching, but also we just want your name at this place yeah. because it'll attract other agents. Correct. But like it but normally the better you do, the larger amount of the commission you get to keep. So when you start, it's like fifty fifty, then it goes to seventy five, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So in his case, is that was that really that weird that the Hilton and Highland would be like you're doing great. Like maybe we give you even a, a larger point of your commission or whatever, but maybe we don't want to have another partner. It's it's fine that he left, but I didn't think that's like a thing that normally happens where people get like a law firm. It doesn't really work like a law firm, does it? I think it does, depending okay. on the size of the brokerage. I mean, a okay. lot of brokerages, these like probably when your parents were doing right. real estate and even still today, there's very few that are kind of like mom and pop owned. There's right. either the mom and pop that are tiny or their franchises. Okay. And the franchises don't really have many, I don't think they have many options for bringing in partners. You right. have an owner and usually the owner is not a salesperson. Got it. Um, so they want to have certain pillars within their office. But it's my understanding that with Hilton and Highland, it was a single office you know, uh, business. And so they probably just wanted to keep it small. 
Right. Um, but, you know, at the agency, we have many partners. We have people with title partner, partner titles. So when he created the agency, um, so what that what I realized is that it was it is a franchise. He does not Some own he does not own all the offices. It's like someone would get that office and so he's just the CEO as he's just like the spokesperson of it. Explain it because I found it to be confusing. So California because you get your brokerage license in California. Right. So the California offices are all owned by our headquarters in Beverly Hills. So he owns those. Right. Oh, okay. Yes. And then obviously he owns a name and likeness, okay. among other people. Um, and then that can be franchised. And so then they get they have access to our assets and to our systems, our internal like custom systems. And so but I think as a broker they can't function outside of California, right? So each independent office is well, each office outside of California is independent. I wanna say it's well, New York, we acquired a company in New York. So they are part of us as well as so headquarters. You, so you go with him to the agency. What year was that? Oh, my gosh. I was giving birth. I was literally having contractions with my second son as they're like, OK, quick, get your stuff out of Hilton and Highland. We have a new office. Um, literally having contractions. Yeah. Um, and that was September 1st of 2011. And my son was born the 8th. <laughs> OK. So you so you continue to work. It's my baby, yeah. You, you continue to work, and was was I'm surprised it took this long, honestly, for there to be a reality show about the agency. Uh huh. And um, being that there was the success of Million Dollar Listing, and there was even Selling Sunset. Did you hear the talk leading up to we're going to have a reality show too? And what was your thoughts? I think it's the. A genius marketing play, yeah. right? I mean, much like all of the efforts that were put in from both Kyle and Mo. I mean, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills was essentially a billboard for the agency, right? And it Absolutely. has been. So, yeah. I mean, it's he's kind of like the Chris Jenner of yeah. real estate, right? The, right. The Popager, let's call him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it was a genius play. It was a matter of like, what's it going to be like? Because we don't want to be like those other shows. And in fact, we had um, several teams that were on those shows. Um, so we had to kind of be very tactful about how we were going to portray You mean they us. were just, they weren't regulars, but they were like presenting an offer or something? No, like we had, we had team members or we had agents within our office and within our company that were on some of the other shows, like Million Dollar Listing. As a, as a regular star? Yeah. Like James and David. Oh, they were on the, they were part of the agencies? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And Tracy Tudor was with us for a while and she left um, a long time ago, well before the show. But yeah, uh -huh. I mean, we've had people come and go that are on the other shows. Okay. Got it. And I think that Mo was probably approached for it, but it wasn't the right opportunity for him. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, it was really, I was interested to see like, what's our show going to be about? Right? right. And, you know, just kind of leading, I'm segueing you into another question. Like, yeah. You know, after seeing season one, I was like, what? Like, come on, we can do better. <laughs> I felt the same. Yeah. I felt season one was pretty boring. I did appreciate that it was very realistic about more, the most realistic about the actual business. Yes. Versus selling Sunset and even million dollar listing, though I love Josh Flagg and I like Tracy, it's a little bit like, you know, okay, got a deal. Like, it, you never saw any, like, the struggles of it. And, and the post, it doesn't happen and, that quickly. Yeah. You're not standing, you're just sitting in a conference table negotiating and stepping outside. Like, that's not how it's right. done. So I, and the poaching and all that, I yeah. liked that, you know, but I did think it was a little dull. Well, we didn't know that Kyle and Marisa were having any troubles. Right. I didn't find like the two, you know, the, the Alexia, the second daughter of theirs, there's Farah who was already working there. I didn't really find like her stumbling and not knowing how to turn on a light like that interesting. You know, I was kind of like, OK, but so then but of course, the second season comes and we know now what's going on, which is mm. sad about the demise of the marriage, um, though they both seem to be doing OK, but it's juicy. And so what made you then go? Did they ever approach you for the first season? Like, yes. or what? OK. Yeah, there was a, a big casting call for the first season. I made it pretty significantly down Did you the have line. someone come actually film you, like showing a house? Like what did, What was your reel like that you gave to the producers? Oh my God, are you kidding? It was like zero lighting, no microphone, <laughs> Adobe like quick whatever, the quick movie, whatever yeah. it is, on my computer of me just 
ranting for six minutes. Oh, okay. Unedited. Right. Send it in. And I was just like, whatever. Fuck and then, it. And whatever then what happens. happened? And I got a call 24 hours later. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, okay, we want to meet with you. Like, what? what is this? What have you done? Like, no one, you know, again, like, submitting a six-minute reel of me just verbal diarrhea, right? And, and Wait, basically was speaking. It, was it ever getting competitive with other agents that, like, did you feel that once the first season came out and also the, all the press it got and all the eyes on it because of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, being that you were a manager at these real real estate office, when someone would come and want to hang their license there, did you feel like uh, sometimes like, okay, are you really here to sell some real estate? Or are you trying to get on the show and meet Mauricio? Well, Mauricio is have- accessible to everyone. So for me, like anybody who wants to be surrounded by him, I think is completely acceptable within like our organization um we you know he'll go out on a listing appointment with a newer agent if that means that we can get that listing if that was if that would be impressive right if that lands the listing then he's all for it and that's what all of us managers do um so that part i have no problem with but no actually i didn't hear about anybody wanting to be part of the show um i didn't even know i wanted to be part of the show i mean i had if i can tell you what was happening in the moment yes tell okay so hopefully this puts a little of my energy in perspective. Okay. Um, I filmed the video, I think, like March of last year. And I had my mother and my sister, one month apart from each other, had passed away. So November oh. and December, I had passing of each of them. So it was... This is literally what happened. So I'm cooking Passover Seder. Which Wait, is, I'm sorry. They, yeah. they, they passed in November and December. And my then sister in November and, and my mom in December. In 22? In 22. And then in March 23? This is me. Okay, so continue. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to. No, I'll get And I'm so sorry for your loss. Uh, it's horrible. It sucks. Yeah. Um, so anyone, you know, you, you have one person pass. It's hard enough. Oh. Two. Yeah. Um, so really what it was is, look, the Jewish holidays are really important to us. I host all of them. I cook all of it. And my mission, you know, is just kind of keeping my mom's energy alive. Um, And a lot of it is through food. So my, you know, for Seder, I was cooking and my mission was to teach my boys how to make Nana's brisket. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted everyone out of the kitchen. My emotions are overwhelming because this is just so important for me and for the kids and just all the pain and all that stuff. And my father-in-law walks into the kitchen, shows me his phone, and it's a text message of the agent Tyler, like, asking if he wants to sell his property. And so I was like, what the fuck? Right? I was like, oh, this is where the storyline comes. Okay. So yes. an agent, the Tyler, yes. was Who's reaching lovely. out to your father-in-law. Okay. She didn't know it was my father-in-law, but it was like it was in that moment that all of it was got hitting it, me. Got it. And so we can. And co- she had was just cold calling. How does she have a cell phone number? How I does mean, that work? Sorry, y'all. It's all out there. You can get sell people cell phone numbers now. <laughs> cell okay. phone, email. Okay. Yes. Got it. Okay. Um, most of the landlines so, don't work anymore right. these days. Uh, so well, the cold yeah, calling right. Work of course, that it would way. have to be your cell phone. Okay, continue. So, um. So I was just, I was, I got very heated about it and I instinct, I didn't know who she was. I'd never met her before. Um, So I, my knee jerk reaction was to call and like shut it down and be like, take my clients off of your list. Right. Um, But again, in my frame of mind and my like, you know, excitement, but not in a good way. Right. My energy was just so intense and I went off on her um, much like she says, you know, I, I, like bit her head off. I didn't even get, I don't think she even like spoke, honestly. Um, but it was well, the next day that I filmed that six minutes. So let's just also say like I was reeling, I was reeling off of it and I was coming on the heels of this having oh, so just happened. in your happened. six minutes you kind of tell the story? Yeah. Oh, so that's, they were like, we already have a juicy yeah. story. Yeah. Okay, And good. I didn't know that she was a cast member too. Like I had no idea. You so just thought she was I a was random just telling a story of things agency. that happened yeah. within the company. Right. I didn't know. <laughs> um, but you know what's great about that, how you explained it, is that I kind of felt like that, and we'll go to the other moment that, you know, wasn't so great for you, <laughs> is that you know, so many times when someone's like, I will say about myself and about other people, I'm like, sometimes 
something just hits you on the wrong day. Right. It just hits you on the wrong day. On another day, you'd be like, other yeah. days you're like, you know what? Like, and, it's human. But it's, it's still that person received that version of you and it's their story to tell that they got a gross version. Yeah. And it is what it is. It's out there, you know? Yeah. And right. I'm, I'm honestly like, am I, is that something that I do on a regular basis? No. Do I pride myself on that reaction or am I, you know, would I choose to do it again like right. the same way? No, but it is what it is and it did happen and I take responsibility for the way that I spoke but I also think that what's interesting is that you see that she kind of calls out a couple times behind the scenes or to uh, in other conversations like I think something else is going on and when she says it to me in the scene I was like whatever like what are you, what are you talking about like you don't know what's going on in my life and I didn't react to it but in real life after that scene I went home and I sat with that for a while and I was that was that was what resonated with me from her conversation with me and I said to my husband I was like oh my god like she saw that and I didn't even know that I was giving that like she saw it. It was it was a big thing. And, you know, you know, she and I have had many a conversation since I like her very, very much. I don't think it was a malicious outreach. But as you know, in this industry, we have to kind of like protect our territory of sorts. Right. right? So it was a little bit of like the mama bear wanting to protect my clients and my own business. And like, no, don't step on my toes. I don't step on yours. But at the same token, like, did she deserve the lashing that I gave her? Like, well, I, no. okay, I had something like this that I can totally remember. Okay, okay tell me. So I had a friend, um, like, you know, so I was, we were whatever, both like in our 30s or something, young mom, fr fan, like friend from the school. So we sell her, we go through, showed her so many properties, found a house, did the offer, was an escrow, and then she was just like, I want out. We don't think we can afford it. Fighting with a husband. Cold fine. feet. Yeah. Whatever. Then we have this other listing come out and this broker's like, oh, I have these clients. Can we get in early? They have, Stop it. They have so much money. They don't know what to do with it. And it's them. We let them come and it's them. And See? I'm like, hi, hi. So then afterwards I call her and I go, what are you, are you back looking for a house? And she goes, yeah, we just ran into this woman like on an open house. And I'm like, all right, I need to, you know, sometimes I'm like, you need to educate these people, like what the loyalty is. And I would like show people property at the end of showing property. I'd be like, I know today was really fun, but unless you buy through me, I don't get anything from it. You can't walk into an open house. Here's the stack of cards, blah, blah, blah. You know? So anyway, I had a conversation. She's like, oh, okay. Well, she didn't want the house anyway, but she's like, okay, I'll work with you. So then I guess she went back to that realtor and was like, I'm going to work with Heather because I've known her forever, whatever. That woman, woo, realtor called me and she was pissed and I got it. And I was like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I wasn't trying to poach her. She really has been my friend for 10 years. We had two offers with her last year. But but even at that point, I was like, I don't really care because I kind of felt like they were full of shit and they weren't going to buy. And in the end, they bought like, you know, direct from the seller through their oh brother, whatever. And they wasted people's time. Right. So, but I did get the scolding. From the as other like agent. A, yeah, as like a poacher and like, how dare you? And your parents have this sterling reputation. Like, who are you? And I'm like, and I like remember, like, I'm still embarrassed by it because it, it was. A, but I don't know if it's, in, I don't know if embarrassment is the right word. I don't know that you should be embarrassed by it. I yeah. Mean, well. Well, I mean, it didn't work out anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if she was if she wasn't my personal friend prior to that, sure, like I wouldn't, wouldn't have, have like I, I would just been like, oh hey, I guess you didn't like my work on the two escrows I put you in that you flaked on. Anyway, so um, so then we get into this moment where you're at the office with the guys, yeah. and again, I think this was just like a venting moment yeah. that if there weren't cameras, I don't think it would have been that big of a deal. Because you were basically, as a viewer, I saw you being like, look, I don't know what Alexia or Farah or, or Sophia, who's just like 23 years old, is ever going to do. They are the daughters of Mauricio. But like, if there's got to be a female in charge of shit, it should be me. Like, right. you basically, am I right? You basically say, it should be me. I've done this. I've done this. I've done this. I've been there from the beginning. I'm older than them. I have much more experience. And... But they go with that info and tell the girls, and it was bad. 
Well, I mean, I call in Spanish, we call it like a metiche, like someone okay. that just like inserts themselves who's nosy. And like it was like they took something that I said and wanted to run with it. Right. And now when you left that office, knowing yeah. there's cameras and knowing that you you didn't say there were, you know, horrible brokers. You're just basically like they're clearly not ready anytime soon to, you know, thank you for understanding to that. take thank over the, the thing. But because they are who they are and they're the stars of the show and they're the daughters. Did you leave? Or Ben and Joey are trying to yeah. get their place in there, right? Right. And using me as a stepping stone as well. But did, Right, the two guys. Yeah. But did you think when you left, did you have any regrets? Or were you like, ooh, that was a juicy scene? Like, what was your thought when you left being like really, you know, forth worth, well, for, coming forth with your thoughts? I mean, look. I'm a novice to reality television, right? So yeah. any acting that I've done in the past, which was just in classes, right, has been scripts. It's not very, you know, right. it doesn't affect you and you know, it doesn't bite you in the ass later, right? Whatever right. you say. Um, so I feel like when I was filming these scenes, like I go red, right? right? Like I do not remember what I said yesterday and there's time in between each time we're filming. It's not like, a you know, back to back days. So... I didn't think anything of it because I don't even know that I remembered saying it. Right? And so, you see that later because then it's like, so it you're bites at me. The, so you're at the open house. They yeah. tell Alexia, which I have to say, I'm very impressed with Alexia. So am I. I'm very impressed with just her. Her poise. And also her interpersonal communication skills for a young woman, real estate aside, the way that she can... Um, express her feelings like when the when the one guy that she dated brief, briefly but they were platonic friends now talked about her and how she approached him and was like this is my reputation I don't like that you said that like I felt she's just very forthcoming like yeah very impressive with very impressed with her I agree and so she gets the scoop and you have, have this big open house in Encino and they approach you don't you think it was shitty that they did it at our own listing I mean, I get it that it's a show, but it was shitty. I mean, I want to crawl into the ground thinking about it for you. It was bad. It was bad because they come right to you as two women, and they're like, why would you talk about a woman like that? And I did think that one thing I thought was, again, very good on their part. What, which I respect. the woman? The anti-woman? No, woman? no. Oh. But the, re the one thing I've noticed about younger women um, – what some of the positives about them is that they they have no qualms about like pointing out like confrontation yeah confrontation and pointing out and being like da 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 right and so to have this younger woman be like why would you say that and I, I could tell that you were like not totally remembering what you yeah, said I totally did not and your blue eyes looked great though even though it was at your open house you. and uh, but the golden hour on the blue eyes were very good in the Encino sun. But <laughs> it was a moment where I was like, I'm dying for this woman. Yeah. I because it looked bad. Well, by the way, I was shaking afterwards when when I, I didn't obviously I didn't know it was happening. I didn't know it was coming. Because, um, of course, they approach you. They're like, how dare you say this about us? Yeah. You know, why would you say it? And you. so I was thinking if I were you, I'd be like. Oh my God! What's Mauricio gonna think? Also, this is on TV, and I'm gonna look like I am like a little snippy bitch. Like, what were all the thoughts going through your head? I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, you know, um, like there was a part of me that, like, again, I'm new to this. I'm like, is this real? Is this really, you know, is this really happening? Right? Right. Oh my God! Like, holy shit! Like, it was all of that, like, coming back to me, going like. Wow. But, you know, our conversation up there truly was probably about 20 minutes long. So you only capture, you know, elements of it. Um, and, you know, I, th I think that they interpreted it like that I was trying to uh, like almost like recruit like Ben and Joey to like, hey, come on me, come on my team as like I want to take, a you know, I don't know. I think that's what they were. That's how it was maybe delivered to them. Like, hey, she gave us this juicy thing. And why would she tell us? And, you know, you see all of this, the back end of they were. I, th I think it came off like they came to her like this woman um, is insecure and talking shit about you. Yeah. And it's not cool and it's not nice. And we're going to tell you. 
I don't and think I was talking shit about them. No, about the girl. That's no. I that's th- how he. T- that's I felt, how they. That's took how it. they took the yes. message. The guys took the message to the sisters, mm-hmm. as Michelle was talking shit about you, as you are two women that there's no way you two women can stand in front of a room full of suits, meaning meaning male executives, right? Which is a little sexist and a little old school. Like I could see why. I'm just saying I could see why it was interpreted that way. I mean, but I think it's just I, a it's a it's a phrase. It's a term. It's not, yeah, it's a I term. Agree. Yeah. I I know where you're coming from as far as experience. Like, yeah. Uh, if any, you know, because even the talk of it, you'd be like, I had something very. I just thought of this. Okay. This is funny. Okay. Just to bring it back to me, <laughs> I had something like this happen years ago, about six years ago, on my. I have like a Facebook group where you gotta you gotta be let in because you gotta know what the what the podcast is about. Whatever. And it's a lot of people. It's like 45,000 people. Um, but years ago, someone, and then see people bring up topics like they would say, who's watching buying Beverly Hills? And then people talk. And I, I, you know, allow that topic to go up. So someone wrote, um, if Andy Cohen was ever to retire, who should take his spot hosting the show? So all the comments are, you know, everything from whatever, Kathy Griffin to this guy to whatever. And literally, like, not one person saying me. Okay? And you're like, this is my page. I'm like, this is my page. <laughs> so, again, kind of hit me on the wrong day. Mm. And, like, because I do that, I spend all these hours on this group. The group doesn't make money. If there's no ads on the group. It's kind of whatever. So many other people have gotten rid of their group because it turns toxic and whatever. But I'm like, no, I'm going to keep the group. People have made friends in the group, whatever. So I wrote something like, are you guys serious? Like, are you not even going to look at me like this? What I was kind of joking, the yeah. fact that nobody had said me. But anyway, years later, this enemy of mine, I thought he was a friend, turned out to be an enemy. He goes on his show and he brings that up as if it was done like yesterday. Okay. And was like, I can't believe Heather is saying like she wants Andy to re- retire and that she wants to take over when that wasn't at all... The context, the yeah. But it was like, who do you think you are? And I was like, well, no, I was just joking because this is my group. You're not. No one's going to even mention a, me. It's also a rhetorical question, right? right like, yeah. who's going to dig it? Like, opinions who, who are like assholes. Everyone yeah, has you, them. You right? can tell that. So I was joking that, like, seriously, guys, like, yeah. this is almost comical that not one person thinks me who hosts a show featuring Bravo stuff and Housewives for the last whatever how many years it had been seven years. You don't think I could be a, an eligible person right. on this fucking you conversation? You, you wouldn't even like nominate me. <laughs> so uh, like I could kind of see how you're coming from. Like, if anybody's looking to have someone uh, take over, if Mauricio wants to step back, it should be me. Is all you were saying? Right. You were being the squeaky wheel. Yeah, you were being the Bethany Frankel. You were stepping up for yourself. But it, that's also the story of my life, right? right? Like I wouldn't have the successes in my life if I sat back waiting for somebody else to bring those opportunities to me. Right. And I think that if I were a guy stepping up, if I were, maybe, let's see what let's see what Ben says. Right. You know, if we get a season three, when right. he's, you know, that's how we end the season, right? Is he Ben's being approached to maybe join and run Mo's team? I mean, I don't know what. Is that a bad thing? If Ben would have been like, hey, what about me? Like, hey, can I come in and help you out? I have a lot of assets. I can, you know, bring a lot of value. I mean, right. I, I just don't know that if it was a male in my position speaking from my experience um, and also my level of comfort. I mean, I think you have to also take into account the personal relationship that I have with them. It's not like I just came onto the show and just discovered these people, right? Like we have yeah. interpersonal relationships and long, like longstanding relationships. So my level of comfort both with the girls and with Mauricio and within the company is maybe a little different than most people are giving me credit for. So I feel like I can just speak a little freer, right? I'm not afraid of my position in the company. Like I I know that the things that I've done are hugely successful, hugely beneficial to the company. But, you know, if it was a guy stepping up and wanting saying, hey, like, you know, let's just let's talk about me for a second, like they wouldn't be the asshole. So when it ends the conversation with the sisters. Yeah. Oh God, a hot mic moment. And then so you so then you what was the hot mic? You oh they what, when I, I said something like you fuckers 
or something oh. like that. <laughs> All right, I can't believe you fuckers or something like that. And Which, you were referring to the boys. No. No, but that's to funny. the guys or the... No, or, no, no, production. Oh, production. It was, I, I was, because I couldn't believe that I was like... Ambushed. I was, yeah. yeah, like they stormed the Capitol, right? Like, yeah, it's yeah. Like, so I was like, oh my God, I couldn't believe that this was really happening. And I was like shaking. I mean, I, I must have yeah, down you, like half a bottle of tequila afterwards. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and for them, like, I'm sure they were just like, all right, cool. Scene's over. Let's go have sushi. Good scene. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Good scene. You're like, my life's rude. My <laughs> career is rude. <laughs> for so, sure. What did you do to try to rectify it on or off camera following that? Um, I did. I, I definitely did. I think, um, you know, once I realized that I had said that the business suicide. Yeah. Which is. A beautiful what phrase. Was, what I was must the say. line you said? If the, if if uh, the girls replace Mauricio, it'll be business suicide. Sounds about right. Yeah, I can't I can't confirm or deny. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember my words. Um, yeah, I mean, it was strong. Does does uh, do you call to talk to Mauricio, or does he say let's come and have a talk? Um, yeah, it was both. It was you know there was there was more to that scene. We he had we had a whole office meeting, and so he was there to talk about some important stuff happening with okay. the company. Um, and then he's like, "Let's talk." And then when he then when we sat down and talked, you know, again, I'm very comfortable with him, which is why he's I can give it back. He's very comfortable just to watch. Like, yes, he 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 really. I can see why he is such a good CEO and why he's so encouraging to for people to want to be in this business because the way he communicates to people. I think Alexia gets this maybe from him too. Um, Kyle's great as well, but like he's just very calming and assuring, and like doesn't give you like the nerves. It's that laugh, right? Yeah, yeah. It's that laugh that kind of just like makes it all okay, right? Um, but yeah, but I, I think you know, I was capable. I, I was comfortable having that conversation where with him again, just because I'm comfortable with him, right? And because I've asked for things, and I'm in the position that I am because I had to ask for them, and you know they were granted to me. And for me, I'm. Again, I'm just a person that, like, if I don't ask, then you don't know that I want it. Right. Right? So now I've brought it to the forefront. I see where he's his where he stands and what he thinks about it. I don't know. That's, like, no is just a recommendation, right? I mean, I can still continue to prove myself and get to a place No is yes. just a recommendation is a great line. Yeah. That's a good one. I mean, I don't know. That doesn't, no yeah. doesn't stop me. Right. And I wouldn't be, and you know, you know, from a real estate perspective, hearing no all the time, just like acting, right? That's yeah. why they're the two hardest businesses that you're my constantly being say, rejected. Well, I decided I could either uh, spend my days flogging myself or I could get into real estate. Like, so I chose real estate. Like, it's that brutal. Yes. Um, We're being beaten down every day, for yes. sure. And so, okay, so go, so when, what did you think when you heard the news that that Mauricio and Kyle were in fact separated? Did had, did you have any? Were there any rumblings about it, or were you completely shocked? No, completely shocked. Oh, okay. I mean, I I read it when it came out on the internet, for sure. And did you think it was real? Um, only because it was coming out of People Magazine, right? Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> right? like, that's pretty legit. I mean, a People Magazine exclusive and was it, legit. And now, at the time that it came out, they were actually all. At the Aspen House, yeah. filming buying Beverly Probably Hills. Probably shit-talking me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in hindsight. While kayaking yeah. and then going to Hermé. Um, and so that it came out and they had their time alone before the some of the agents came yeah, to thank God for to that. Like that. Um, I don't know. I'm going to say it because it's, it's my show. I thought about it later and I'm like, nobody knows who put this out. Right. Nobody knows who put this out. But that could be anybody. Just like Real House has a Beverly Hills. Nobody knows who put out the story about Puppygate. Right. It could be... Um, an assistant. It, it could be an assistant. Production. It could be, be production. Anyone. Yeah. And same thing when people go, oh, did you see, you know, um, this anonymous item about so-and-so cheating or whatever. I'm like, you don't know that that's not a producer trying to get some action going, yeah. to having these shows go. So I think whether it was them or something, they knew, and this was a great opportunity to have the family together and alone to have to talk about this. Oh, I don't think they knew. You don't think they knew? I don't think they knew. Okay, well. But I mean, it's just, it's, I don't, I, I don't, I maybe mean, I don't think that, that, no, I don't think the kids or anybody knew. I'm, but I'm just wondering. No, I think product. Okay, I think someone on production, somebody knew that it was happening. That, that so they were, that they could that catch they it. They were actually living separately and put that story out there 
and had it drop at a time so that it could drop while they're together and then could film Interesting. this reaction. Either that or it was really kind of great uh, divine intervention reality style because yeah. – you know, it, it, well, was, it was like Fourth of July, wasn't it? So they always are together. Why well, don't? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't yeah, think about the time yeah. like that. Yeah, and um, and then what do you think about uh, the the question I've asked myself a hundred and fifty times? Morgan and Kyle. What I liked is we saw it happen on Beverly Hills. We saw it happen in the press prior. Are they just friends? Is it just that she loves her music and is helping to do a documentary about her? Are they just you know? There's an age difference. Their same sex relationship, whatever. But what I thought was interesting about Mauricio in the show is he goes, the other guy, what's Santiago? This? Yeah, goes, what is this? Because I'm seeing in the press, like, are they? And he's like, I don't know, but he's she's obviously getting a lot from that relationship, and I'm happy for you, her. I was like, okay. So then I was like, okay, now I have a totally different perspective of their marriage. Now every marriage is different. I really think that they really didn't communicate that much as a couple i really don't i think they lived led a great life i think it would i think every time they went to a black tie they had a great time i think they had sexy time after i think she made a great meal i think he went off and did her thing i think they didn't really argue like she said we yeah. really didn't argue we really didn't have our stuff and so it's like it's weird like i i really don't think he cares if she is in a lesbian relationship for now I just think there's every marriage is different. And I think for some people, they're fine chugging along and until they're not, until it really is. And you do think back to the psychic when she goes, oh he'll God. never emotionally uh, fulfill, fulfill you. you, which seemed so off kilter, so wrong. Also, she was so ahead of the vaping game, right? I, know. I mean, wow. That, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I thought that was so weird and so rude and everything. Else. And then yeah. all the years after that, I was like, that chick's wrong. Look at them. But anybody that gets divorced, it's because they're not being emotionally fulfilled by their partner. Maybe there's cheating. Maybe there's this. But if you were completely best friends connected, I mean, I, I don't know that you wouldn't be able to make it work. So that's a very general statement that anyone could say. Any divorced person, you'd say, oh, your, your husband that you're divorced from, was he emotionally fulfilling you? No. I found it very, I mean, on a personal note, like when I had lost my mom, when I was struggling with, you know, with everything, it was like there he could do no right, to be perfectly honest. My, hus husband. my oh. husband could do no right. I was like, everything I say, you're not hearing me. Everything I say, you're not doing. So, you know, and maybe, and by the way, the show was also, I wanted to do something that I have control over, which... Evidently, in reality television, you have no control over it. And yeah. I've learned that the hard With way. With this show, did they say, can we show your family or anything? And was that a question? Um, yes, but we said no. Oh, you did say no? Yes. Okay, good. Um, How old are your kids? I have a 12-year-old and 14-year-old. Mm -hmm. So there are two boys. So they're, like, very impressionable. And, you know, I'd rather if they show my kids, it's on my terms. It's not on Right. Theirs. I think that's really smart. And I just think... You know, there are some kids that are, like, dying to do anything. I mean, my you know? kids go to school with every reality right. star, you know, kid. So it's, like, it, it does, it's not exciting for them. Right. You know? I mean, they're... they're I just remember the, the one time that we were doing something for a possible pilot for, like, a show about me. Not until recently did my son say how much he even hated, like, those two days of filming. And that he was like, if this show goes, I'm just not going to participate. And I'm like, what would I have done? The <laughs> you are the show. Us. Thank God the show didn't go. Yeah. But it could, when did it go show that even though you think that you're so close to your kids and they can come to you and tell you everything. And he was acting like he was okay with the mic pack. He was afraid to tell you no. He was becoming resentful and like praying that the show wouldn't go. And thank God it didn't. Yeah. And so it's like it's really hard when people put their kids in it and they think, oh, they're fine. Or, oh, let me just do this video with them. Or let me exploit them in this way. And they're really not. Yeah. So I really think in this age of more exposure, social media and everything else, you really have to, like, check in with your kids. And maybe they were okay with it three years ago. And now, now they're, they're not. not. Yeah. Just like maybe they wanted to do gymnastics when they're six and they don't want to do it at 12. Like, yeah, their ideas the, are with the wind. Yeah, the right. kids change. And so... Um, but also, like, imagine... Okay, so now you know my edit. Right. Now you see me on the show. And my kids are watching. Okay, so what happened? So, I mean, literally, I was like, 
I was holding my breath like, are my kids going to hate me? Are they yeah. going to think differently of me? You know, I was like, I had to say I drove them to school the morning that the show was coming out. And I was like, OK, guys, I'm like. You know, mommy's spicy sometimes, you know, mommy's like, you know, says things in a really firm way. And they're like, yes. I'm like, but you know that I'm not a bitch. And they're like, no. I'm like, you know that mommy like really has good people. You know, I had to like almost like sell, spin to sell myself. <laughs> exactly. And so um, and they ended up watching it. Like, I, was, I said, we're going to watch it when you guys get home tonight. Yeah. And they ended up watching it throughout the day at school. So it was so funny how my son is, is texting me in the middle of the school day. And he's like, why, why is Ben mad at you? And I'm like, what? What are you doing? <laughs> He's just like at lunch watching yes. it. Yeah. He's like, did he really unfollow Brandon? And I was like, get to school, get to class. So, um, and I was like, no, everything's fine. Like, we're, we're fine. It's, it's it's a TV show. But afterwards, they just said, mom, like that part was really cringe. Don't say, <laughs> don't say that word again. And I was like, okay, but do you still love me? And they're like, of course we do. And they were so proud of me. And they're like, next time we see him, we're going to punch him in the face. I'm like, we're not going to do that. But I appreciate the, like the support and the backup. I'm like, but yeah, I'm like, it, it's, it's very your, fun to Have watch. your kids ever brought you potential clients? Cause I had to do that for my parents. Like listen up. And I'd be like, mom, this, this guy, this Johnny's dad's getting transferred. And like give a hot tip. Have they ever like <laughs> brought you or or through them you've gotten? Well, I used to let them go like bike around the neighborhood and yeah. I would give them my business cards. And I'm like, if you can bring me any lead, I'll give you a hundred dollars. And they would pass out my business card. I so love it. I would do that. Um, we had to deliver p- pumpkins to every house. Oh boy. During October. And it would be because like that the was mini when you really farm. No, they were like the seven dollar. <laughs> and my dad would like run a truck and we would be like. That's ju- manual labor would, right yeah, there. Yeah, we'd have friends in the back. No seatbelts, nothing in the oh back God. of a big pickup truck, dropping, putting on each porch with like a, an envelope yeah. with all the info and, you know, these pumpkins. And finally we realized and then we switched to coupons for the pumpkin. It was too much. <laughs> But yeah, it was a lot of work. Yeah, I, yeah. I put them to work for yeah, sure. Yeah, good. Um, I think it's good for them. Absolutely. Um, but they... no, no hot tips. But I do. I'm very involved at the school, and I, you know, look my, my the way that I work is all of my business is repeat and referral and right. and friendships, and I I have a great repertoire with. I, I, I like to make it fun. I like to make what I do. I mean, contrary to what you see, like, I like to make my business fun. But I also think that if you're going to have somebody, I, what I do like about the show is that people are going to know I'm somebody who is going to have your back. I'm someone who's going to fight for you. I'm not a, you know, you're not going to be, walk. I'm not going to be walked all over. And so I have your best interest at heart. And I think that when you're choosing an agent, you really want to have somebody who's strong and firm. And so that I think is, that definitely came across in the show. And I think it'll appeal to the right clientele let's put it that way okay two more questions yeah okay so if the show comes back for the third season yeah do you have any um reservations about returning to it and being on it um obviously yes but at the same token like uh i think it gives me an opportunity as like a little you know maybe you can get to know me in a different light right and in a uh, more positive light i you know, everyone loves a comeback kid. And <laughs> um, and also, you know, reality TV, like every season, you start to love and hate different people in a different way. So I think that uh, I think the show could do well with me on it. I don't see why not. And you were saying, how does your so how does your husband feel? Does he did it? Was it stressful for him, even though he wasn't on it, having this extra job of filming? Because while you're actually doing your real estate work, how often were you putting on a mic pack and being followed around and stuff? Thankfully, we didn't do any filming in my house or okay. with him around. So it was all, you know, going to events and going, you know, to set locations in the office. Um, so he didn't see much of an impact on it other than, you know, having to take the kids to school when I was doing hair and makeup. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know. I think I think he'd be OK if I didn't do it again. Um, OK. But he's OK if you do do it again. But he's OK if I do do it again. Yeah. And you mentioned hair and makeup. So. If you want hair and makeup before the people come to slap the mic on you, would you have to pay for that yourself? 100%. And um, how was the payment for it? You don't have to tell me, but does it get better with each season or was it? That's my understanding is that there's a step up basis okay. each season, which is normal from what I understand. Yeah, it's never very much in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's okay. I mean, look. The, the bigger picture is you're, the you're on a picture. show that's in 150 countries or whatever it is. That's wild. Yeah. I mean, I think I thought to myself one day after it came out, I was like, holy shit. Like, yeah. this is a global show. And it's, you know, it was what, top 10 in 26 countries or something at one point. Right. So it's pretty massive. 
I don't know. I don't know. I, I told my husband, I was like, look, I'm like, we're going to take the escalator and see where it takes us, you know, instead of just walking up the stairs. And that's what this show is, I think, for, for me, for business, for whatever our next steps are as a family. I think what you're doing is smart. I think you stay on it. And I, and I don't think you involve the family, no matter how much they, they try and beg you. I would not. That's my advice. They didn't involve anybody else's family. So, okay. I think well, it's you fair. never know. Couple seasons down, they might be like, "But you're so funny, and da da, your family, and da da." Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I would. I think I would say no. I my think husband I would, would not. Really yeah, be cool with it. I think it. And would, I understand that. I, yeah, because what happens is these husbands agree to do housewives or whatever, and they're confident and they're happy, and then they get a taste of like fucking losers in in their basement being like, "He Trolls. he was mean to you when you when he poured the coffee. You should leave him," and he. You didn't look, and what was with that ugly sweater? And yeah. the guy is like, what? Like, like, I've lived a confident life my whole life. Like, who? And it can really. It can mess with your And head. that's why there's, you know, 100 divorces or whatever it's been since the, the show started. So I would I would protect that your private world. marriage and mm-hmm. family, like, as much as possible. Would yeah, be and, and protect myself. I mean, I don't have comments activated on my Instagram. I just don't care enough. So, oh, so it's just a photo, but you could like it, but you don't can't. I comment. think it's. I think you have to have like a certain like either I follow you, you follow me back. I'm not really oh, sure. Oh, okay. But I'm just. I have no interest in people's negativity or yeah or what they you know. Hopefully, That's, it's all again, praise. That but, is smart. Like I feel like all these little things, like you know, when people enter this world, I always say there should be like a little like um. A tutorial. I could be. I could be the Real Housewife <laughs> consultant or whatever to just give you some of these tips of. How to get the most out of it, but also these things can really protect your mental health. Totally. And well, Netflix does a good job of that. I will oh, tell good, you. Oh, good. Yeah, good. They, they do highlight that in, uh, before we went out. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just, again, you know, I just feel like I'm like I'm a grown ass woman. Like, I don't care what somebody and God knows where has to say about a moment that they saw in my life. And That's good because a lot of people it would, you know. And well, I, I'm not I mean, trying I've to been, be a reality yeah. star. I'm not going on like Road Was Real World Challenge, right? right? Like, <laughs> but I mean, sometimes, not, you know, you could hear a hundred really nice comments and, and it's that one, one and it just you know it's really hard to get to that People place are mean. with the blinders yeah i mean sonica who's on our show she went on tiktok and she was like i'm getting death threats like people be nice yeah and i'm like what did she do that she deserves a death threat like it's a reality show about real estate you know yeah. so anyhow i really enjoyed meeting yeah. you um i'm sure you've gotten calls f- from people that hopefully want to list their house or Get into real estate or whatever. So how can they find you? What's the quickest way? Best way is on Instagram, uh, Michelle Schwartz Realtor. And um, I do, I, I like to help out anybody. I like to pay it forward. So anyone who's been asking me advice on real estate, I've been engaging with them, um, giving them just top line info. And I really like to teach. So, yeah. So that's probably the best way to get in touch with me. And um, on there, you have all my my office information as well. So I hope I can sell your house or help you buy a house. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was great. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.